There's more than one thing wrong with what James Carville says here. Look, uh, 13 years ago this October, we started bombing Muslims in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We're still bombing them. Does any sane person think that 13 years from now we're not going to still be bombing them? Of course we are. And if you listen to what Secretary Gates said, we're, and maybe we have to be. Maybe there is no alternative to, other than bombing people. Carville is obviously talking about the bombing of Afghanistan in October of 2001. But he's simply wrong that that was the start of bombing of Muslims. Because no sooner did President Bush step into office than he started to bomb Iraq. And neither the host nor anyone else on the panel pointed out that Carville was wrong. Several blogs and Twitter feeds featured this James Carville quote. 13 years ago this October, we started bombing Muslims in the Middle East. Without pointing out that actually the start of the bombing of Muslims was right at the beginning of his first term in 2001. As I tweeted in reply, pointing out that yes, Clinton also did bomb, but let's not overlook that Bush was bombing right from the beginning of his term. He was bombing Iraq. It wasn't a reaction to the 9-11 attacks. President Bush already had been attacking Muslims. And there's a pattern in the media of ignoring the track record of continual bombing. For example, when President Obama made his big speech saying that they were going to do airstrikes on ISIL. My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak to you about what the United States will do with our friends and allies to degrade and ultimately destroy the terrorist group known as ISIL. Much of the media either underreported or gave the misimpression that this would be the beginning of Obama's airstrikes against ISIL, while ignoring the fact that Obama had already bombed ISIL. The first of the U.S. airstrikes hit early Friday, targeting an artillery position that had been firing on Kurdish forces protecting Erbil, a city where the U.S. has diplomats and military advisors. Later, U.S. fighter jets taking off from the USS George H.W. Bush struck an Islamic State convoy and mortar position with laser-guided bombs, while a Predator drone armed with Hellfire missiles took out militants at another mortar position. As I pointed out in this comment to a post that was questioning how ISIL will react, I said, you know, this is Orwellian. We really should remember that Obama already bombed ISIL and that ISIL reacted with threats. Quote, the rhetoric-filled message promises retribution for American airstrikes in Iraq and mentions the terrorist attempts to trade Foley for American-held jihadists or for a ransom. And then the beheadings, in a horrifying act of revenge for U.S. airstrikes in northern Iraq, militants with the Islamic State extremist group have beheaded Foley. The media has done a very good job of confusing the sequence of events. Here's a quick example where this isn't clear. He says, but. That's a question. You say, you know, look, we want to have Sharia. We want to just live on our own. Don't attack us and we won't attack you. But when you're beheading people, when you're cutting off their heads, what's the, wh why are you cutting their heads off? What's the, 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 the philosophy behind that? Come to me, I will come to you. Attack me, I will attack you. You attack one of us, we will attack one of you. But if I can leave us alone, I'm going to tell Barack Obama, this Barack Obama, inshallah, Ya Rabb, I hope Barack Obama listens to this message. Saying but when gives the false impression that the beheadings were occurring and then the U.S. reacted to that. So that gave the misimpression that the beheadings came first. The misimpression that the beheadings were occurring and then the U.S. bombed ISIL. And here's a clip from David Letterman where he's talking to Bill O'Reilly. And they both managed to misrepresent the situation. Oh, what, the what are we going to do about all of this beheading? Should, should we have reacted to the beheading? Should we have said, you know what, you're not going to get our attention. We're not going to get mired down in another war. We're going to solve this another way. Or do we then go into uh, striking uh, airstrikes in Syria? The, the beheading, I mean, it's, it's done intentionally to irritate us, to get us to, to act. I yes. Mean, both O'Reilly and Letterman omit the fact that U.S. bombings on ISIL came first. Then the beheadings were a reaction to those bombings. There's so many things wrong in that segment with Bill O'Reilly that I'll make another video about that. The very next video when it's done will be available right here. This is just another example of the way elite thinking serves the interest of the powerful. The people that are making the missiles, the cruise missiles, and all these weapons are making billions of dollars. And they create a market for it. And people play along with that creation. And let's keep in mind that the war crime of the Iraq war, President Bush still has not been prosecuted for his war crime. 
He's been using a provable lie as his excuse for why he attacked Iraq. The Iraq war was a clear-cut war crime, and you have the media and the political elite still covering for a war criminal. Click here to see this video where I prove that President Bush has used a lie repeatedly for his excuse for why he attacked Iraq. We really have to claw our way into the public discourse because it's being dominated by people that serve very ugly agendas. Please subscribe. Please use the YouTube tools to share this video with everyone you can. Don't make a copy. Just use the YouTube tools. Just use the tools to share it and ask other people to share it. You can embed it on a blog, write a little description of what do you think about my video and share it with other people. And also subscribing to the Representative Press blog will probably result in more views because I've heard from many people saying they don't see the new videos in their subscription feed.